Where is he? He's in the back there. All right, Mum. Morning, world, and welcome to Tuesday, 9th of April, and we've still got him. Oh. Well, he's still a bit down in the mouth. And yeah, you're not feeling very well. <laughs> Because he's not feeling very well, he's not feeding properly. And she's complaining because she's got a absolute udder full of milk. All her teats are swollen and she's uncomfortable because he's not sucking her out. So we're off to the vets now to go and pick up some electrolytes, possibly some antibiotic as well. I don't like giving um, antibiotics if I can help it. Basically, he's got diarrhea. So, yeah, but I can't give him modium. Don't worry, Mum. We'll sort it out. <laughs> Matt the Spark is back as well today, which is the reason I didn't get off earlier than I wanted. Well, I wanted to go to the vets an hour ago, but I had to wait for Matt to turn up because I've got to leave the house unlocked for him and just show him where stuff is before I could go. So he's arrived. We've done the induction. I can go. Well, what can I say? It's raining again. I'm glad I did that bit of... Uh, slitting and raking yesterday because I definitely would not be doing it today. Although we haven't had a lot, it's enough just to top up that surface moisture on the ground and enough to make the tractor mark, mark the ground. So yeah, glad we did that yesterday. I was hoping to get a bit more done, but we'll just wait for the next dry day, I think so. Um, gonna make some inquiries today about some fertilizer. I got a quote the other day for, um, straight urea, so just basically nitrogen, was 390 a ton. I'm gonna have a, another ring around today, uh, maybe look at what I can get some 2010-10 for. So I'd like some 2010-10 with some added sulfur. So 2010-10 plus S. Uh, that's what we're gonna go looking for, and we'll see if we can get some of that. I reckon we want, um, we've got 30, about 30 acres to do here. So, and at between 100 and 150 kilos an acre, yeah, I'm gonna want a few bags. Oh, right, so we have got our electrolytes. So basically we just mix this up warm water, stick it in the cast throat, and I've got myself a little drencher as well, which is probably just the job for that. Small can, so easier than a teat, it's just a, yeah. And I said I could probably do live yogurt with that, you know, if I've got a calf that's poorly again and just needs a gut to peck up, a bit of live yogurt, water down with some warm water in there, slosh it about. I don't know, maybe. And a bottle of that, which means I'm gonna to have to now go and find the foreign medicine book, which I think is in my office drawer because I haven't put anything in that medicine book for, I can't remember last time I bought anything like that. So this is antibiotic basically for uh, livestock, so I've got to put that in the medicine book, then make a note of who I'm giving it to, how much I'm giving it, the date I'm giving it, and all that sort of stuff, so to make sure I'm all legal. So, right, let's get home, dose of calf. Two litres of warm water. That's better. And we'll put that in there and give it a bloody good shake. Now, can I get it in there without spilling it? <laughs> Biscuit, shut up, it's just a sparky. Right, we'll wash this out, put that in there, and go and give it to the youngster. Right, there's Tiddler, and you just moved right in his ear all, didn't you? So I don't really want to get too involved with him because you're a little bit proud, aren't you? So come on, Tiddler. Psst, psst, psst. Up you go. Come on. He says, I don't want to. Right, okay, well, fair enough. I wonder if I can chuck you out. 
Go on. Out. Everybody out. Go on. Out. Out. And you, you can go out as well. Go on, get out. <laughs> Calf 206 was on his mum's tit all the way out of there. <laughs> Walking sideways going, oh, I'm hungry, I want some of that. So, right, well, as you can see, this little chap is not very lively. So we're just going to give him something to... So this is uh, just warm water and electrolytes. In a drenching bottle. So pretty much all we're going to do is very gently pour this down his throat. Unfortunately, I'm not left-handed. You're facing the wrong way, aren't you? Oh, now you're going to go in there. Awkward. Am I going to be able to catch you? Do you coming out of there, really? That's it. Come out of there. Let's put that out of the wind. I think what we'll do is we'll try and get him in that end pen where I can get him in a corner. You can't run away in there, can you? Go on. In you go. Go on. He didn't like that very much, but uh, it's probably made for bigger calves. Right, that's half of it. Let's go and fill it up and give him the rest. <laughs> I'm going to save a little bit in reserves. Did a bit of that go down the coming up pipe? Yeah. I think when I gave him the first set of dose, he, um, he went, <gasps> instead of... Mm. So. All right, mate. Come on. Get your head round. Get your head round. That's it. Right, well, while Matt drills holes in my house, we'll go down and administer a bit of this. So, the only thing is, I could only find a 10 mill syringe but I think that's actually enough because this is uh, I think it's one mil per ten kilos and I reckon he's probably 70 ish let's have a look at him see what you reckon somewhere between 60 and 70 kilos are anyway so a 10 mil syringe will be enough Not 70 kilos. 50. So, yeah. That's mum over there shouting at him. So, we're going to give you five mils of this. That can go there for a minute. That can go over there. Deep muscular. <laughs> Think that's smarter a bit. Right. That can go back in the box. That can go in there. E can go back out with mummy.
this whole sorted out anyway. Right then, time to prepare for one of my not so favourite jobs. Holly and us, we, we've run out of beef. So I need to um, produce some more. Job for Wilf, this is. We are going to go and put the cattle trailer on. Let's get. Get ourselves ready, and then we've got to separate out the two steers that are going to go, put them in a pen, and then we're going to load them, and then for half three, four o'clock, we're going to be over at Eastington. Come on, in you go. And drop them off. Ready for tomorrow. Randy. Four inch. So far, so good. There you go. Thank you. Right, this wind is going to make my job difficult. Because I've got to hold that door. Some 6 8 is already in there. Basically, what I'm looking for is the two lowest numbers on the ear tags because they will be the oldest steers. 169, that's 168. 164, so the red's the 164. So he's a tad older. And what are you at the back there? You're 178. You're a big chap, ain't you? 171. Now, 171 is a candidate, not because of his um, number, but because of that horn. That's definitely going to be an, an issue. So, so it should be him, really. But because of your horn, I think it's going to be you, mate. You're a steer. Don't want you. Right, OK. So. I forgot to untie that gate up there. So I'm probably gonna have to start this all over again. Um, although I was saying that, 168, 171, I don't want you. It might be just you two because you're in here. Let's have a look to see what we got. Nice and calm, no rush. Oh, I didn't have the camera on, but I saw the opportunity and I just kicked the little one out. I say I kicked the little one out, opened the gate and he walked out, so. 169. So they're all much of a much of a size. But I prefer to let my beef age a bit longer, so strictly speaking, it should be you. They might actually depending on the birth dates, and there probably is. Literally only maybe a couple of weeks between that and that. All right, let's see if we can do this. Go on up. Go on, in you go. Let's have you out. Out. Go on. Out you go. Go on. Ah, 
if you wouldn't mind going in there, please. Would that be all right? Thank you. And if you wouldn't mind coming out. Out you go. No, out. Thank you. That's it. We're done. I'm afraid you guys have been chosen. Right, so this is where it starts getting a little bit more risky when you're handling cattle, especially by yourself. Because these two guys have been separated from their mates and the food, stress levels are already starting to rise. So there will be more chance now of getting kicked, run over, squashed, or whatever you want to call it. So, yeah. We're a little bit more excited now. So, next job for me is to go up to the house office, double check ear tags on both these animals, make sure we've all got all the paper we need, and then back down, once that's, once that's confirmed, put them in the pen in there and get them ready to load. They've both got their ear tags, both ear tags. Um, I dare say the abattoir would take them with one ear tag, but it's kind of frowned on and a big no-no, so yeah, we haven't got to worry about that. They've got both. Right, the sparkers are making progress. Um, two more lights now on Piddly Squat. So one's going to light up the gateway. That's on a photo cell, so that basically is on all night. Some people will call that light pollution because I'm having the gate illuminated all night rather than on a PIR. The thing is with PIR, people walk past that gate. Animals come past the gate a lot. A PIR is going to be flicking on and off all the time. Um, and to be honest, for what they cost now, these LED light bulbs, it's like 16 watts, something like that. It's, it's nothing. So we got one facing the gate, one facing the barn. So basically when the light, lads come out in the evenings in um, the winter months, their cars are going to be all lit up from that side and that side. It's going to give Holly quite a bit of light to come down to her cabin if she wants. Um, we've still got backup lights up there if we want, and over there, and over there. So basically, we've got one switch, and I was talking to um, Matty about it. We've got one switch in the house, no, two actually, uh, that operate the great big halogens. Currently, the big halogens, we're going to have those changed to great big LEDs. Um, so one switch is in the bedroom and one switch is downstairs that basically if the dogs kick off and something goes on at night, whether I'm upstairs or downstairs, I can literally flick one switch and it illuminates the entire yard. It's something we had built into the house when we built it. Built into the house when we built it. Yeah, so basically it was wired into the house when we built it, so we had that option and it's just a security thing. Anyway, all my paperwork is done, so both passports are filled in. My food chain information is done. That can go in there. Have you been waiting for me patiently, Biscuit? Have you? Bless you. Right. You stay there. Now it's going to be the fun bit. Go on, back it up. Go, girl. Right. Hopefully it doesn't stay too blinking windy. You two guys can come out. On your feet. Come on. In you go. In you go. There's a good chap. Go on. In you go. Good man. Well done. That's that bit done. Yeah, you can't actually go that way. Go on. Back in there, mate. Go on. Got him. I can close that again. They can come back through, get back on the grub. Uh, remember to open that gate before I go. Right, hang on to the door, because it's windy. Right. 
We'll put the partition in, because there's only two of them, and they'll rock around if I don't. You should actually be in there. Ooh, come to me. Right then. Well, room for two. So I reckon we'll go on. Let's see if I can load these cattle without them knocking that camera off there and smashing it to pieces. Change my mind. Right, that's the gate chained to the steel post of that. I'm going to put the camera up there where they can't reach it. Yeah, that's not going to stay on there, is it? Wind's going to have that. Right, let me see if they're going to behave themselves. Head round, go on. Go on. Go on. Get your head round, go on. Get your head round. Go on. You started out really well then, didn't it? Come on. Go on. Go on, get there. Get there. Get up there. Go on, get up there. Go on. Go on, get up. Woo! Get up there. Go on, get up there. Go on. Go on. Get up there. Go on. Go on. I'm not cooperating. I might have to get the stick. Go on. Right. Sorry, you gotta go in there. Who's that me stick? Oh, grief. Get your nose round. Back it up. Go on. 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 Get your right, right. Go on. Make your right, right. Move your ass. Move your ass. Move your ass. Go on. Go on. That was harder than it should have been. 
don't like using that, but they're bigger than me. Anyway, that is the worst of the job over and done with now. What I call the dangerous bit is done. I think I might take that with me. There wasn't any way I was going to get away with it, was it? So, and then I opened the gate. She made a beeline straight for me, basically stuck her head down, nudged, nudged me and said, bum. Now. Didn't you, you big trollop? Come on, back it up. Have oh, you got to go through there? Forwards or backwards, I don't mind. Thank you, thank you. You let down that shit down there. That's our poorly calf. Don't lie down in that. Come on. Get up. Wait. Get up. Come on. So no wonder you got a shitty backside lying in that. Go on. Go and get in the dry. So when I come back from the abattoir. He's going to get another dose of electrolytes. Go on. Thank you. In the dry. Sorry, don't worry. I remember to open the gate. Hello. Famous Dave's here. Can't stop long because I got a cat on the trailer, but I will say hello. Right. That's two less eating me bales, isn't it? Briefly later, because we had a visitor, I had to have a five minute chat with him, famous Dave. Um, so he's down there now, stopping everybody else from working. We're off to the abattoir. Um, I won't video the trip there because it's just a road trip. And I think we'll probably see you when I get home. Time now is 10 to three. That won't be too bad. I told them I'd be there between three and four. So we're gonna be there about quarter past three. So, spot on. Right, that's it, mission accomplished. The cattle have been delivered. They couldn't wait to get out of the trailer, straight out of the trailer, straight down in the lairage. Um, and they're actually in for the night with two other cattle. One of them is a belted Galloway, I saw. I'm not sure what the other one was. But um, yeah, so they got some friends to talk to tonight until tomorrow, until tomorrow. But um, yeah, that went reasonably well. Loading up didn't go fantastic. Biggest problem was the red animal went on. He was quite happy to go on. The black was less keen. If they'd both gone straight on the trailer, it would have been simple. But because the black one hesitated, the red one turned around and go, what are you waiting for? He came back out and then that was it. They didn't want to go in then. So, which unfortunately meant bringing the bit of hose pipe out, which I don't like using. I'd rather not use. But when they start getting a bit antsy, I don't want to do it. And the only thing between you and them, you know, is a half ton animal, it's two of them, there's a ton of it, um, is a little bit of blue pipe. You kind of do what you have to do, so, yeah. I mean, to them, that pipe's more like a tickling stick. You don't, you never whack them. It's only tap it and encourage it, but, um, yeah. I don't like people who hit cattle. That's not on or any animals actually. Right, so we are not gonna go back through cam because at the bottom of cam pitched by Tesco's, they're digging the road up. Um, and they've got traffic lights down there. And it looks like those traffic lights, with well, what they're doing, they're concreting something in the middle of the road, I presume it's a new traffic island. Those lights are gonna be there for a couple of days. So, yeah, a 
avoid camp pitch.